Let's talk about HTML entities. The word entity brings up a lot of different ideas, but what we're really talking about with HTML entities is the ability to print characters that either aren't part of our standard computer keyboard or characters that have a special meaning in HTML. For instance, we've created some web pages that quote some of the great speeches and documents in American history. But there's no quotes around these things. So that it looks as if we happen to be writing this ourselves. Now, nobody probably would mind to recognize that these are historic documents, but it would be nice to be able to say, put a quote around our text. So let's see how we can go about doing that. If you go out to the HTML tutorial at W3 Schools, you will see on your menu to the left, HTML entities. And I'm already at that page right here. And basically, they're telling you what I've told you. It's simply a way to get a non-displayable character displayed. And they list out some examples of these characters. For instance, if remember that your browser doesn't care about white space, so you can type a hundred blank spaces to space something out but the web browser is going to treat those 100 spaces like one. But if you really want it to pay attention, then what you need to do, expand that size a little bit so you can read this along with me, is use the non-breaking space, which is the first item here in the chart. And that would be, for one single space, the character's ampersand, N, B, S, P, semicolon. Now remember that we use the less than and greater than symbols to frame our tags. So those two symbols have a special meaning. We can't just throw them in to our web page and expect them to be treated like a less than or greater than symbol. So if I want to use less than, it would be ampersand LT semicolon. For greater than, it would be ampersand GT semicolon. And by the way, if you really want an ampersand, it's ampersand AMP semicolon. Now, if you take a look at this chart, there's some interesting things that you can do. You can do it a cent sign, the British pound, copyright, registered trademark, trademark, but what we want is a quote. And it's not on this chart. But right below is a link to the HTML entities reference. And this gives us the ISO 8859 one reference. So this is a standard set of symbols or entities that is standardized by the International Standards Institute, or ISO. So let's take a look. And the very first thing on this complete chart Actually, I should say complete set of charts. The first thing listed is our double quote. Now, I could enter that entity by either referencing the number ampersand 
pound sign 34 semicolon or using the entity name and the entity entity names are probably easier for us to remember so the entity name would be ampersand q u o t followed by a semicolon okay so this is FDR's first inaugural address. Now, if you'll notice, there is no quote at the beginning. Let me expand that size so you can check that out. There's no quote there. There is also, if we can scan down to the end, no quote at the end. So, our reader may not understand that thank you to American Rhetoric for posting this document is not part of the speech. Now that's pretty absurd, but it might happen. So let's put quotes around this. And I just happen to have Text Wrangler all set. Now, let's come down into the body right to the beginning of the first paragraph and let's put in now do you remember it was ampersand q u o t semicolon and notice that the text for this entity turned to blue that tells us it's something more than text now html will recognize it now, I'm going to real, real quickly move to the bottom, and I'm going to put the same thing here at the end of FDR's last sentence, and that was ampersand, Q-U-O-T, semicolon. Okay, let's save it out. And let's come back to our page and let's refresh it. And there's the quote, the ending quote. And if we move up to the top, there's the beginning quote. Okay, that gives you an idea of what you can do with entities. And these are not things that I expect you to remember. Um, but know where you can find the information. Know that you can go out to the W3 schools or do a Google and find these codes and insert virtually any character you wish into your web page.